Hi there folks, welcome back to the kitchen. Uh, we are here tonight and I'm gonna let some folks uh, join in. Uh, I was not able to uh, be with you last week for a little cooking because I had a Zoom board meeting. Uh, I work with the folks uh, on Annals Samaritans and Hiley and uh, Steve, there you are. Uh, we had a board meeting last week and I'll tell you if you support a charity and all of them, all of them across the valley need our support right now. But if you're an animal lover, I really encourage you to uh, help out Animal Samaritans. Obviously, all of the 501c3s in the Valley are, are dealing with lots, of, and everywhere, uh, with, with lots of shortages. So, would really like you to help out Animal Samaritans. But that's why I was not here last week. Uh, and uh, so this week, I'm going to tell you, I was inspired. Well, yesterday, Paul Bar, which is one of my favorite places, if you guys have never been, it's at... Uh, Gino Autry and Vista Chino, and it's in this little strip mall, and they're serving takeout to go orders, food and cocktails. Uh, I recommend them. But yesterday, their special was Sloppy Joe's. And I thought, I'm gonna go over there and get a Sloppy Joe's, and I thought, no, I'm gonna make Sloppy Joe's at home. And that's what I did, I made them yesterday. They were fantastic, and I thought, you know what? It's simple, it's comfort food, and I'm gonna make them tonight because I got a fantastic recipe. It's my mom's recipe, which she made around. Now, I've made some modifications, and you'll probably know what those modifications are as we go along, but glad you all could be with me. Um, we've already started here. I've got the ground beef going, and so what we're going to do, and the great thing about this recipe, as with a lot of what we make, it's very modifiable. You can make it with ground turkey. I've never done it with ground chicken, but maybe. You can make it with plant-based, uh, you know, the Beyond Beef. Uh, I did taco night with those, the, the, the Beyond Beef. And it turned out um, really, really well. <laughs> Thank you, Mark Eads. Yeah, I know, I know. I should powder the, the bald head. Uh, yes, I'm making Sloppy Joe's, Mike, and I, I know you're going to love them. So, one of the things I already did, and the great thing about Sloppy Joe's, you can make them any way you want, right? It, you know, how the kids like them, how you like them. They're really versatile and really easy. But one thing I already did, where did I, okay. I have sauteed off. I like green peppers in my Sloppy Joes. Uh, it makes them sweeter and they're delicious. And there you see, I've already sauteed my onions and green peppers. We're gonna put them in later. So I've sauteed those and I saved the, the uh, oil from the pan from the olive oil uh, that I used to saute the onions and peppers. And now I'm browning the beef in that. And I'm gonna add just about everything to the ground beef. And again, you can make it with uh, the protein of your choice. Um, what makes this recipe special, I think, is because it is sweet and it's tangy and it's versatile and you can add or subtract any of the ingredients, just about any of the ingredients I'm going to show you throughout uh, the recipe. And you can make it to suit your taste, to the kids' taste. And one of the important ingredients that I put in, I like brown sugar. You've got to have brown sugar in your sloppy joe. So I got hmm, about a half a cup of that. Bourbon. I put a little Jack Daniels in there. Can you see that? Not just in my glass, but also tangy Richard, not spicy. Don't worry. Richard, my friend Richard Herbig is watching and uh, for him, ketchup is spicy. Yeah, well, he says he hasn't eaten sloppy joes since the 1980s. You're gonna love these sloppy joes and it's a great comfort food. You know, it takes you right back. Steve Gary, my buddy, he said, oh, so you're gonna channel your uh, inner lunch lady. Well, yes I am and that's okay. You know, my mom used to make these. It was a great Saturday night dish when, you know, she was tired. We'd been maybe working in the yard all day or doing something like that. Mom would say, hey, we're having sloppy joes because it was easy, fairly quick. Now, this recipe I'm going to make, I don't do a lot of shortcuts. Later on, I'm going to show you a little shortcut, but I'm not talking. Don't get the can of man, which forget about that. Don't use that. This is better and it's going to taste better. So I've got ground beef, which is... Uh, 85 15 so it's pretty lean it's not you know fat free I'm gonna show you you guys have browned ground beef before so this is no no great secret so there you go we're browning the ground beef but as that is doing that I'm gonna start adding my ingredients because I want them to sort of infuse with the ground beef so I've got it over medium heat I've got a pound of ground beef again if you want to use turkey that's great um, if you want to try the beyond meat or the impossible beef, you can do that. So I've got it browning. As it's doing that, what I've got right here 
I did about, oh, three cloves of garlic. Uh, I don't like a lot of garlic, a little garlic, you know me, but something I've done, I've put it, I've chopped it, and then I put it in a little water. The reason I did that is I'm gonna add it to the ground beef while it's browning. I want it to incorporate in there, but I don't want the garlic to uh, burn up because then it gets bitter, as you know. And you don't need a lot of ground, uh, a lot of chopped garlic for this. So I've got my ground beef. I'm gonna put that right in there. Beautiful, very nice. Now we're gonna stir the garlic in and let that start to infuse just a little bit. And again, medium heat. You don't wanna overcook this. And with a couple of the other ingredients that I'm gonna put in, it's really important that the pan is not too hot. And you'll see why in just a minute. So we got that going. Oh, that's beginning to smell really nice. Now, of course, you gotta have fresh cracked pepper. I know Richard, I'm making you, this is, this is making Richard Herbert's head explode. A little fresh. <laughs> he thinks, again, he thinks ketchup is spicy. And some nice salt right in there. There we go, that's good. All right, as the garlic is cooking into your beef, you've added that, that's very nice. Now, what I like to do, you need a little Worcestershire sauce, okay? Again, the whole, and I know I'm cutting the top of my head off, but that's okay, it's shiny anyway. You want it to be sweet and tangy, and depending on the taste of your family, maybe a little more tangy, maybe a little more sweet, but I love Worcestershire sauce, but you don't need a lot. So we're just gonna put a couple, yeah, right about there, that's good. All right, so now we've got the garlic and the Worcestershire sauce, and we're gonna let that cook down. Oh, that smells really good. And again, I like my uh, sloppy joes with the onions and the peppers. You can leave out either one or both. It, it's okay. You don't have to go either way on that one. Uh, and if, you, if you're not a big Worcestershire fan, you can even leave it, although that is gonna be, I think, a tragic loss for this recipe. If you make this recipe exactly the way, and I don't make it the same way every time, but if you make it the way I make it tonight, you're gonna love it. All right, so I've got that cooking down. I brought the heat up just a little bit. All right, we're gonna add that delicious bourbon, okay? I cook with Jack Daniels, because that's what I have handy. Uh, good old Jack Black. We're gonna add that right in there. Uh, I'd say about a third of a cup. And don't worry, the alcohol cooks off. This is still a family-friendly recipe. You can still serve this to the kids. So now, I've got that in there, and it's just the beef, the garlic, the Worcestershire sauce, and now my bourbon in there. So that's gonna cook up a little bit. Now the reason I've got my heat at about medium high is I'm gonna put the brown sugar in right now so it's gonna cook down with the bourbon, all right? So you're gonna get a really nice, robust sweetness out of this, but Jack Daniels, of course, it's uh, filtered through charcoal, so it's very mellow. It loses some of the fire, but it keeps some of that nice smokiness. So we're just gonna put, there we go, the brown sugar. And if your heat is too high, and my buddy Henry, we were talking about this before this, if your heat is too high, you will caramelize the sugar and scald it, and you don't wanna do that. So you wanna keep it nice, medium. Oh, this is delicious already, but we gotta keep cooking. And again, this is definitely family friendly. You're gonna, you're gonna turn up the heat, you're gonna simmer this for a little while. Hello, Richie Fano, how are you? Ciao bello, my good friend Richie. If you're ever at Bocce in Huntington Beach, Go see Richie, he's one of the best pianists you're ever gonna, and if you're lucky, he'll let you sing with him. Uh, he's been known to let me do a summer one with him every once in a while. Salute, chin down, by the way. All right, now, I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit and get that cooking in, because I've got my brown sugar, my garlic, Worcestershire sauce, and Jack Daniels. It's all going in the ground beef. Let's take a look at that, and again, pardon, the fact that the stove is a little messy, my wife's gonna kill me. But look at that, doesn't that look delicious? And that's coming along nicely. You want it just to bubble and simmer like that. Don't let it go crazy, because again, you got that nice brown sugar, and you don't want that to burn. So we're gonna let that cook for just a little bit. And again, I made this last night just kind of on a, on a lark, because Paul was running a special, and I thought, man, that sounds good. And like you guys, I hadn't had a sloppy joe in a long time. All right. We're gonna let that bourbon cook down just a little bit more because again, I wanna cook out the alcohol. I just wanna save the nice flavor. Now, the other thing you're gonna put in, Richard Herwig, close your eyes. We're just gonna use a little chili powder. Not a lot, you don't want a lot. Maybe about a half a tablespoon. 
max, but it's gonna give it a nice dark color and a good flavor and a little bit of that bite that you like. So there we go, we got that. Again, just a little chili powder. If you like spicy, throw in some red pepper flakes. I did that yesterday. I'm not gonna do it tonight because I'm gonna save this and kids are gonna have it so they don't like it all that spicy. But now I've got my chili, the chili powder, the bourbon, the garlic, the Worcestershire sauce, all of that coming along. And I want that to cook down a little bit. I want to get rid of some of this liquid before we finish up. <laughs> Richard's freaking out. All right, here's another little important step. A little brown or Dijon mustard, okay? Mm, that's about a tablespoon, maybe a little more. So we're gonna put that in there. All right. Oh, that's nice. There we go. All that, just to enhance the flavors, that Dijon mustard, it's not spicy, Richard, it's just nice brown Dijon mustard. All right, now we're gonna let that simmer for just a couple of minutes. I've got it just about cooked down to where I want it. And I told you, there's a, there is a shortcut. I will tell you the shortcut when I'm finished making the whole recipe. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this cooking from the kitchen uh, since the quarantine. <coughs> Pardon me. It's really nice to uh, to be able to do that and come together. One of the things I love about cooking is it's one of the things that brings us all together. How many ounces of Jack to complete the meal? Uh, Brett, I recommend about that much, okay? But right now, with everything that's going on, Food brings everybody together. It's, it's a commonality for all of us. And that's why I enjoy bringing you guys into the kitchen each week and doing this. It's a lot of fun. Plus, I get to revisit some old recipes, try out some new ones. And uh, some folks have been asking for marsala, chicken or veal marsala. I think that's what we're going to do next week. Uh, my friend Raju over at El Paseo was asking me for a vegetarian recipe. Well, if you use the Beyond Meat... You got a vegetarian recipe, Raju, so you can do that. All right, so this has come back up to temperature. I am cooking down, getting rid of all of the alcohol because we want it to be kid friendly. Now, tomatoes. You got to put some tomatoes in there. You, if you like a really nice, smooth, sloppy joe, use tomato puree. If you like it chunky, use diced or chopped tomatoes. These are finely chopped. Why is it called? Because it's sloppy. And I think the guy who first made it, Philip, was probably named Joe. I don't know. But I'm going to use my favorite, the Italian chopped tomatoes, the San Marzano's. Uh, they come in a little puree, so it's nice. But remember, when you do this, you're going to have to cook it down a little longer because we're adding more liquid into the recipe. All right, there we go. Now we're getting that beautiful, rich color. We've got the bourbon, the Worcestershire, the tomatoes, the garlic, the mustard, and a little chili powder. Not a lot. Oh, that looks delicious already. So when you do this, you're going to want to give yourself enough time to cook that down. But let's take a look. We're getting close to what looks like a classic sloppy joe. We're going to turn the heat back up, and we're going to let that simmer for a little bit. And once we start to get rid of some of the liquid, I'm going to add in my already sauteed onions and peppers, okay? Hey, Jan, how are you doing? Jan said, oh, I haven't had sloppy joes in forever. So, gotta bring this back up to temperature, and, you know, it depends also on how you like your sloppy joes. Do you like them really messy, really kind of runny, or do you like them a little thicker? Uh, I'm gonna cook this down for a good while, but don't worry, the good news is, I made it yesterday, so that's no problem. I can show you the finished product. Do I deliver? No, I don't. Uh, all right. The last thing, and this is really an homage to my wife because she likes ketchup. And uh, they put ketchup in Lithuanian dishes in a lot of things that you might not expect. But I've got about, oh, a quarter to a third of a cup of ketchup. So once we put our tomatoes in, we're going to bring it back up to temperature. But then I'm going to add just a little bit of ketchup. All right. Not a lot. But I want that... Beautiful red color, right? And this is gonna help thicken it up just a little bit. 
Plus, it's going to give you that, as Steve Gary likes to say, the old lunch lady flavor. Uh, <laughs> so that's exactly what we've got going. And now I'm going to bring the camera back over and show you this. This is looking a lot more like the sloppy Joe that you remember. Okay, but with all of those wonderful flavors that we put in there, the mustard, the Worcestershire, and the bourbon. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? That's already looking really good. So we're going to turn the heat up a little bit on that. And once you get the liquid cooked down enough, you can add in your onions and peppers. I already sauteed them, but not too much. I just kind of let them sweat a little bit. And there's not <laughs> and once, once you do that, they're ready to go. But you want, you want them to be softened up just a little bit before you put them in. But I'm going to let this simmer probably a good 45 minutes to an hour before we actually serve it. But don't worry, we're not going to be online that long. So let's just go ahead and put this in. Those beautiful onions and peppers. Just like that. And again, you can leave out almost any of these ingredients. You're still going to have a great sloppy joe. But trust me, just make it one time like I'm making it right now. And you're going to love it. All right, let's take a look now. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? All right, I'm going to tell you the shortcut, too. So I put in the chopped tomatoes. <laughs> Lee, he is a wimp. Richard is very scared of anything spicy. If you don't want to cook this down, for, you know, if you don't, if you want to whip this up really quick, uh, don't put in the tomatoes. Instead, double or triple your ketchup and you're done. The other thing I like to do is put in just a little splash of apple cider vinegar. Okay, and if you use just ketchup, you don't have to do that. Uh, my apple cider, well, let me grab it out. Because again, we're working with getting that balance of tangy and sweet, and apple cider vinegar is the way to go if you want to do that. And not very much. Don't use a lot. Just, mm, there we go. That's about it. All right. And this complements the Jack Daniels beautifully, a little apple cider vinegar. Again, if you want to make it a little quicker, you can forego the tomatoes, the apple cider vinegar, and you can use all ketchup. I don't recommend that because this is going to be a rich and really flavorful sloppy joe. Your kids are going to love it because it's going to have the right amount of sweetness with the brown sugar we put in. You can adjust the amount of brown sugar you put in that. No problem. If you like yours a little sweeter, I put in uh, about, what did I say, a third of a cup, half a cup of brown sugar. You can, of course, increase it or decrease it uh, as you wish to make it uh, the way you like it. But I want you to take a look at this. We're simmering nicely. That is coming along beautifully. We're making a delicious, traditional Sloppy Joe, homemade from scratch. No, none of that, oh, a little butter. Wait, I'm gonna go back and read that for a second. Steve says a tablespoon of butter. Oh, that's, that's a good idea. You can throw in a tablespoon of butter and smooth that out. Uh, I will tell you that the Jack Daniels is gonna make it nice and smooth anyway. All right, that is just about perfect once we let it cook down. So who does the dishes? Caroline, I, I do the dishes. When I'm done, I do the dishes. I gotta do all of them, but that's okay. I don't mind. Uh, so the good news is I toasted my roll just a little bit ago. Oh, look at that. I made this yesterday, so I've got my Sloppy Joe all ready to go. And one of my friends on Facebook said, oh, you know, it would be good toast the roll with a little slice of cheese on that. Yes, absolutely. That'd be wonderful. Okay, here's the finished product. A delicious, homemade, from scratch, sloppy joe. Look at that. Isn't that delicious? And I gotta tell you, it smells fantastic. Uh, a very, very flexible recipe. You can use it with uh, any number of the things you like, and you can take out the things you don't. You can change up your beef to a turkey or a plant-based. It's super flexible, and it's super delicious, and I'm gonna enjoy that. And the way I'm, I cooked it down so it's not real sloppy, 
Uh, but there you go, huh? That looks pretty good, huh? All right, that's the recipe. I love cooking with everybody and talking to everybody. Like I said, it's so nice to have something that brings everybody together. And I started this because all the restaurants were closed around the valley. We started to open back up. It's nice. There's some live music around. Bernie's, Vicky's, The Nest, other places. So now maybe we're getting out to eat a little bit more. But it's really nice to be able to come together, enjoy a meal, share a recipe. So I'm going to continue doing this each Thursday around 5 o'clock. And we'll just have a little fun. And it also forces me to keep the kitchen pretty clean. Thanks for joining me. That is my homemade from scratch best ever sloppy Joe recipe. I hope you enjoy it. Try it out. I think you'll really like it. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow, News Channel 3. I'll be there bright and early at 5 a.m. And of course on CB1043 starting at 2. You guys have a great evening and we'll see you next week.